Good morning, guys. It's Chris from DAXtrader.co.uk. It's Monday, the 25th of September, and this is the DAX Technical Analysis. We've just completed the webinar, and so if you weren't part of that, make sure that you come along to those um, for the rest of the week and afterwards. You get the link for that on the Telegram channel. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, look in the description below and you'll see the link down there. The Telegram is free to download and uh, the link is free to access. If you like what we're doing here on DAX Trader, make sure you share uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and all that sort of stuff from the website. Uh, you need to register a free account in order to view the articles. Um, but if you want to join the community as a premium subscriber, then you'll get access to all of the other tools as well, like the live room, screen shares, uh, signals, that sort of stuff as well. All right, so we're going to do a quick summary of what we've just ran through in the webinar and look at some of the tools that we use uh, in, the, uh, in the room every day. Before we get started, just to explain that trading financial markets is risky, involving the risk of losing our invested money. The webinars and videos are provided for educational purposes only with no investment advice provided. If you decide to enter a trade on the back of any of the webinars or videos, then please do so entirely at your own risk. Okay then, so German elections over the weekend, Merkel CDU gets a majority, but the coalition with, uh, is it the SDP, is going to be no more. Instead, it's probably going to be a Jamaica coalition uh, with the black, yellow, and greens. Um, FDU, I think, are the yellows, and then uh, the greens are green, of course. So we'll see what that happens. It might take a little while to negotiate, but really kind of a non-event for me, um, dare I say it. No real major upsets, apart from the fact that the uh, AFP got quite a lot more votes than uh, perhaps was expected possibly as a result of the immigration um, policies from, from Merkel. But who are we to comment? So if we go and take a look at the charts in that case, let's have a look and see what's happened. Now, we've recently been in an uptrend, so uh, we can probably go and start looking at tidying this one up just a little bit. So uh, I'll talk you through why the lines are there. So if we look at marking out the major swings on the daily chart, Okay, so uh, let's just zoom out, make the board a bit bigger. There's one there. Trend then started to come down. And then we have possibly considering that swing, taken out this little one here. So we've had a couple of broken swings here. And so we had the broken swing from, where are we? This one here. And we had the broken swing as we were coming back down again <coughs> from this one up there. So you could, oh yeah, you could probably mark that in as a swing as well, couldn't you? So that one there got broken. That one there got broken. I wonder if you were to pull ACR through the broken swings. Hmm. To find out a potential target area. Might leave that one off for now. <clears throat> but at the moment, really, the major target that we're looking at is still going to be based on this expectation that the gap that we had at the beginning of September is going to act as a balance point for this larger move to the upside. And that gives us a target in this little zone, which is possibly around about the 12,800 mark. Okay. Will we get a pullback before we reach that? It's very possible. But we're still waiting to see that. So that is kind of the area that we're looking for to reach. Okay. Let's zoom in to the 60 minute chart. We've got pretty much the same sort of idea here. Um, we've still got the daily swings that we were looking at before, but we've got the, the sort of mid swings as well, the more minor swings in the middle. And I have got the same fib. This is the balance point target that we were looking at just a moment ago. So just going to tidy this up. 
Okay, so what we can do with these swings is we can start to see how these Andrews forks work. And you can start pulling them from these areas to look for potential target zones. And you'll notice how you had a touch of the median line on this one. So you can then move it to the next one. Take it from the next three swings. Starts to build up a picture of where price would look to return and, uh, and test. Sometimes it's easier to pull these up on a lower time frame rather than uh, the high ones, but uh, they're very, very good tools to use for retracement. You'll notice that on that swing, price came back to touch it here, like almost to the pit, pit perfect. Great, great tools. These are the tools we use every day in the channel. <coughs> so we've had a bit of an anomaly this morning with this uh, initial price action where we've actually tested this low and we've actually pierced this low. And based on the fact that it was over a weekend, plus there was major German elections, you would have imagined that something was going to happen. But actually, it's relatively tame reaction to what could have happened. So you may consider that just an anomaly and just use the candle body rather than the wick or the tail to decide on the trend. But really the job is for this, this high to be taken out. We need that high to be taken out here to confirm that this trend is still intact. Otherwise, we're either in a period of distribution or even marked down where we're going to start trending lower. So we're going to keep an eye on that. So at the moment, we are still in a pretty clearly defined channel, really. I mean, although these uh, swings don't show it, I mean, you could just take a, a regression tool. Excuse the colors of this tool. I'll change that. Just quickly do that now, but uh, not a big fan of the green. Pretty clearly defined channel. You could maybe make it a little bit tighter. Uh, if you accept that that tail is also an anomaly. So if you manually draw your lines, that sort of area. Yep. And then you just continue buying that buy line until, until you can't anymore. So somewhere in that zone, maybe even a little bit higher. You could, for example, just sort of say that that is your buying area. Whenever it fits inside that, that in those train lines that you're looking to buy. And we're just continually putting pressure on the sellers here. We're asking the question. We're buying into them. They're not able to break through it at the moment. And we're just pushing them back. At some point, something's going to pop. Has to. All right, then. On the four-minute chart, as far as intraday goes, now the one area that looks interesting to me at the moment is this little area I've marked out here. It's a bit of a pocket. So if you look left from last week, there was an area that was being tested. And again, price was being pushed into that area. And uh, it's been sort of marked out as a zone, somewhere in the sort of 620, 630 area. But from Friday, that area was interesting as well because as we were trending higher during the day, we created and opened up this little, little, this little pocket. So price gapped through it here with this big blue candle there. Yep. And then immediately turned around, creating this sort of void, this little gap. Price traded below it a little bit and then gap through it one more time. So it's almost like a little zone. Little, uh, maybe a low volume node. I don't think it's a swap zone exactly, but price definitely didn't want to do business there. <coughs> Excuse me. And price continued to move higher look, to kind of test the 650 zone. Turned around, zoomed back through it again. Look. And then traded underneath it before we actually finished the day barely underneath it on Friday, which was interesting. Had the gap lower, closed the gap, and look where we are again. So one or two things will happen here. Either this continually gets respected or is it going to zoom through it one more time? The third option is that we trade inside that range, but it's a pretty small range. 
So perhaps we're going to look to continue to uh, shoot past. I was playing around with an idea uh, on a, another chart book. I'll just bring that up. Here we go. Same idea, except on a 500 tick chart now. And that little area that we just talked about <coughs> isn't marked out on this chart. But we've got this doji just in here. I don't know if you can see that because I've got lines on it at the moment. Doji just there. Now, dojis are interesting because they can be, one of, again, one of two things. They're either going to be reversal area or they're going to be a balance point potentially on uh, the wider move. So if it's going to be a balance point, ideally I want to see that being taken out. And then you, you can map an extension target. So you can put the 50% line, so from a Fibonacci retracement tool, take a, the low from the bottom, put the 50% line through the doji, and it maps out a potential extension target up there, which would be with FXCM 676, somewhere up there. How you plan your trade, it's entirely up to you. I'd like to see some confluence. Ideally, I'd like to see that, which is a kind of a zigzag. Not a very good zigzag. Let's try again. There's a better one. So uh, just as an example, something like that. Yeah. So it breaks through, confirming that Doji is potentially not going to be the reversal area. <clears throat> and then continues higher to take on the target. So that'll be a measured move. That's an, uh, an idea. And that's pretty much the main idea I'm playing with at the moment. Intraday. Because the wider move is still 800. That's the byline that we were talking about with the channel. That's pretty much the last option. All right, the last thing to go through just quickly uh, is to show how to, and again, summarize what we were doing in the webinar, use the pitchfork idea for trading. So if we just go and set up a quick replay of Friday. Maybe something like that. All right. So as price starts to move then, we can start drawing out some swings. So let's assume that, uh, what should we do? That's a low. Can't really use the gap. So what we're watching for is we want three sort of swing points really. And until we've got them, we can't really do anything with the work. So if we assume that's a high, we're looking for a retracement, and then we're looking for that high to be taken out. Then we'll have three points. Let's assume that it's going to be there. It looks like it will be. All right. Well, if we assume that this is the first point that we can use, all right, we've got three points that we can pull a fork from. One, two, three. Now, the idea of the fork is that price is going to often come back and test a median line. Well, it did hit there. Yep. Nice and easy. If we now assume that this is the next high, we've got another three points. So one, two, three. Now we're looking for price to come back and test that median line there. And if it doesn't, it doesn't.
What I've noticed here is that there's no stop loss on this trade. So I'm just going to get out of that for the moment. So there's the median line touch right there. If we then assume that price starts to turn around at that point, and draw another fork, same three points. You're looking for a target there. So if you went long, ah, there's the stop loss underneath the bit structure. Target is way up there. And look at that, it's hit your median line. Look. Okay. And then you assume that, well, that's your high. Do you want another fork? I'm going to get somewhere down here. You want to be careful with your stop losses, of course, because in this particular case, it didn't work. What you would have had is a stop loss there, which would have been taken out. And then you would have another one as a low. And of course, in real time, you've got time to actually work on this. But at 100 times the speed, it's uh, a little bit tricky to uh, keep up with it. But it's showing you the idea, at least. So again, draw it from the fork. There's your median line. Touch. Great. Draw the next one. And you just continue following the trend. So uh, these are waves that we're following. And there's some work by Elliott Waves to say, well, you've got five waves. Well, I don't really care too much about Elliott Wave, to be honest, because market's not just, it's not always going to fit to five. So you can do your head in trying to say, oh, you know, well, where's the one way, two, three, four, five? Well, who cares? Just mark out your swings and just follow them until there's no swings there anymore. You know? So you, you continue following the trend until the trend's not there. And it will work out sometimes where you get a perfect trending day. And it's great for that. Trending days are brilliant for these particular tools. And you can just continue trading for high highs, high lows, high highs, high lows, using the forks for your median lines and pullback retracement zones. It's just brilliant. And I think and then what happens is you continue marking it out, continue marking out your swings, yada, yada, blah, 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 whatever they are. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller here. So you can kind of start to detect that something's going to happen. It can't continue making these moves. And, but you keep following it until it's taken out. It fails to take out the new high, this one here, and then takes out a previous low, that one there. And then you start looking for the other side, drawing, your, drawing in your forks and so on and so on. Now, this is on a one-minute chart. I'm not recommending that you do that because it's very, very fast. It's very jumpy. It's quite granular. But it definitely works on a four-minute chart, 20-minute chart to do it with this sort of idea. Okay, not going to give away everything in this video. However, there are the sorts of tools that we use uh, in the community every day. If you're interested and want to learn more about that, come and join. So that is what we're looking for today. Quick summary, we've got a buying trend line here. So we've got this line to continue hammering until it's broken. You've got the longer term targets of 12,800 based on that uh, balance point from the daily chart that we were looking at down here. Um, and we've also got a potential intraday move where, uh, yeah, well, there you go. I think they're, now that we've taken that out, it looks more likely that, uh, wait a minute, it's on the other one, that's why. Uh, it looks more likely that this is going to be something that's interesting for me. Okay, that doji, if that works as a balance point, then this is my target zone here. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. Come and join us in the webinar for tomorrow. Come and join the chat room, uh, sorry, the broadcast channel, should I say, which is where you'll find the link for the webinar. And uh, the link for that is in the description for the video below. The chat room is available for premium subscribers. So if you want to come and join that, um, then you can do a subscription on the website. I wish you the best trading day today. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Take care, guys.